And first of all, let me say welcome. Thank you all so much for turning out in such great numbers tonight to talk about the Civic Auditorium. Um, as somebody who's worked in the arts her entire life, it gives me great pleasure to see so many people caring about this uh, wonderful landmark facility. So thank you. My name is Jessica Cusick. <laughs> I'm the Cultural Affairs Manager for the city, and I have had the pleasure of working with a wonderful group of city staff from each and every department who are here tonight to think about um, what the future of the Civic Auditorium could be. Um, so we have people um, from Housing and Economic Development, from Public Works, um, from Planning, uh, from finance. It's uh, really a wonderful interdepartmental project and we've all been looking to find a solution to our problem. So I'm going to go through a brief presentation to kind of bring you up to speed on, on where we are right now. So this is a snapshot of our current situation. The Civic Auditorium unfortunately is scheduled to close in less than 30 days. It is closing because it is both financially not viable at this point in time. Um, it requires a subsidy of about $2 million to operate. And in addition to that, it is um, not seismically sound. So it really cannot continue to function in the current environment. As you know, we were scheduled to renovate it. We were actually planning to close on June 30th to start the renovation. Um, but unfortunately, due to the loss of redevelopment, um, last June, last August, um, the city council had to put a stop to the renovation project. Um, interestingly enough, if you go to the next slide, this is actually, oh, well, this is an impossible chart to read, but it gives you a sense of all the different milestones that uh, we've been working on in the Civic. I started working for the city in 2005. And um, when I started working for the city, at that point they said, you know, you really need to take a look at the Civic Auditorium and what we're gonna do about the future of it. So um, basically, um, the Civic Center Specific Plan took a look at the Civic Auditorium. The Cultural Plan took a look at the Civic Auditorium. We um, looked at the Civic Auditorium as part of the Joint Use Plan. So we've been really trying to think about how to solve this problem and um, problem in the sense of the financial drain on the city resources and rehabilitate this wonderful facility and provide a cultural venue for our community. We're actually sort of seven years into a process. Um, and I think that's a very important thing to remember. And we're probably five years out from a solution. So we're sort of, you know, somewhere in a continuum. Um, when we went to council at their study session last fall, um, what they asked us to do is basically they said, yes, we're going to still need to close the Civic Auditorium. As hard as it is, we're going to still need to close it. But in addition to that, what we would like you to do is we would like you to go out and take another look at what the financing options might be, how we might be able to pull together uh, the money to renovate this facility. They asked us to take another look at operating models for the Civic, and they confirmed that it should be used for cultural and educational use, that that was really what the community wanted to see there. Um, and they also told us, this is an important building, we don't want to just see it mothballed, so come up with an interim use for us. So, being good, diligent staff, we went out and did exactly that. Um, the interim use that we are suggesting since the Civic may be closed for five years or more, um, is one that we think will allow us um, to maintain all of the building's um, systems and uh, make sure that the building is active and animated and will also serve the community. So we're looking at basically um, continuing to use the East Wing, which is the smaller, um, newer portion of the facility where we have community meetings and smaller events um, for public use. Um, and then we're also looking at essentially um, using the main hall uh, for non-public assembly uses. 
So that would, primarily in our minds right now, I mean, we're open to what that would be, but we think it's more like a sound stage or filming. Um, and um, those uses, you know, I remember when I used to live in New York, right, every movie coming out of LA had scenes in the Bradbury building. Well, if any of you have been down in the mechanical room in the Civic, you know, it's an amazing room, and I could see a moment in time with all movies coming out of L.A. at scenes from the Civic. So, you know, this could be not such a bad thing in the interim. Um, we would also use the parking lot for some limited events. Um, in terms of funding, we didn't find, unfortunately, any magic solution. There are basically two primary options. One is Voter, seeking voter approved funding, and that would most likely be a general obligation bond, um, which would involve all of you who are resident here um, increasing your taxes for a very good use, mind you. Um, or we would need to look for private resources. And um, those private resources would most, most likely anything we do is going to take a combination of things. It's not going to be just one single solution. So in terms of private resources, um, we could lease the building, um, that's one solution. We could look for private investment, um, which most likely would come in the nature of uh, development of the adjacent land, the parking lot. Um, we could look at naming rights and partnership. It could become the Toyota Center for the Arts, for example. Um, we could look at some limited foreign investment. Historic tax credits will probably be part of the final renovation package, whatever it is that we do. And then of course there's the private fundraising campaign. Most likely it's gonna take a combination of those things to put together the 50 plus million dollars that it's gonna to take to renovate this facility. Um, in terms of operating models, there aren't that many different operating models out there. Um, but basically we could lease the facility to either a for-profit or a non-for-profit entity. We could enter into an operating agreement with an entertainment company. This is similar to the proposal that we had um, originally taken to council, which was with Niederlander Entertainment. Um, or we could enter into a booking agreement um, with the company. And essentially what that means is they would be in charge of bringing shows and events uh, to the facility. Um, most of the operating models that we look at, looked at, people felt would require the full renovation. Though I have to say that some people felt that if we did the basic infrastructure upgrades, which is about half the cost, it's about $23 million, um, that maybe then additional upgrades could happen over time. So that you know maybe it would be possible if you could make that initial $23 million investment to kind of then do later um, capital improvements. Um, there was consensus that the Civic could be um, managed more cost effectively by the private sector. Um, there is an agreement out there, um, because it's a reality, that all cultural facilities require some level of subsidy. This is not something that can be done um, without um, an investment source. Um, but also, on the flip side of it, cultural facilities generate a great deal of ancillary economic activity. That's hotel stays, dining, parking fees, you know, all of that ancillary activity. What we found out in talking to all the experts that we talked to is that there's definitely demand for the um, facility. This is in part due to its what, prime sort of west side location adjacent to the beach. The arrival of the Expo Line, it's a combination of um, reasons that make it um, particularly attractive at this point in time. And, um, you know, there's this kind of continuum that we've been struggling with. I, I think um, you've seen it in a lot of the meetings that we've talked about, which is basically that um, the greater level of control that the city seeks to have over the facility, either from a point of view of dictating programming or content or access, um, then the greater investment that is required on the part of the city to gain that control. And the flip side of that is, is that the less control, so if we said, we don't care what happens there, you guys go off and operate it, you know, do whatever you think is best, then we would have to make the least investment. And that's kind of the continuum that we've been struggling with. Um, as part of our information gathering process, the other thing that we did 
was we asked uh, the Urban Land Institute, which is a nonprofit 501c3 uh, organization whose mission has to do with land use and building better cities, to come and help us take a look at the intractable problem of the civic uh, in post-redevelopment years. Um, our, the panel members are all volunteers, and um, we had a wonderful panel that was um, actually chaired by our former city manager, John Alshuler. Many of you may have um, attended the presentation that they made or um, seen, it, um, seen the PowerPoint online, but I'm going to summarize some of the points um, that they made. Um, this was after an intensive briefing book, and um, working from that and a couple of days of interviews and on-site tours. Um, the first thing they started with was that it's important to save the Civic Auditorium. Not that it makes economic sense. It doesn't make any economic sense. We could, for the same amount of money, build a much better facility. But because of the amount of pride and history and symbolism that the Civic Auditorium represents, it's important to save it. 